In this DEXI build video, we're going to be focusing on the main electronics installation as well as some additional components. On my left, we have the Raspberry Pi camera cable, our PWM connector, which will go from the art board to the 4-in-1 ESC, our heat sink, which will install over CM4 to give us heat dissipation. We have our Wi-Fi antenna cable, battery straps, and finally at the end of the video, we'll use these standoffs to mount the art board to the DEXI top plate. Now, I keep referring to this as the art board, and I will do that throughout the videos, but I want to provide a little bit further clarification about it. The official name is the ARC Pi6X Flow. Let me quickly cover some of the high level greatness with the ARC Pi6X Flow. You'll know that we have the Pi CM4, which will plug directly into the board and give us compute capabilities. We also have the 6X, which represents the Pixhawk 6X variant. That is this STM32 H7 microprocessor, which runs at 480 megahertz. So we have both flight capabilities and compute capabilities all in a single board. And finally, we have optical flow and distance sensing. So this arc flow sensor allows us to get great position hold and measuring distance from the ground, both indoors and outdoors. And finally, we have a couple of tools and some hardware, which will all be provided in your kit. We'll start off by installing our PWM cable. There is a eight pin JSTSH connector on your four in one ESC and an 11 pin JST GH connector. That provides the communication between the artboard and the ESC. The artboard will be running PX4, doing computations, sending signals to the 4 in 1 ESC. I'll start by plugging the JSTGH into the artboard. And then finally, we'll plug the SH connector into the 4 in 1 ESC. Now, make sure to pay attention to the pin orientation. I always recommend looking inside this connector. You'll notice that the pins are placed at the top of the connector. So we wanna pay attention to that orientation so that we don't potentially bend any of the pins which can lead to motor failures. Next on the list is the Pi camera cable. You'll notice on the artboard, there are two camera ports. One is on the side of the board with the four and one ESC and the other is on the side of the board facing the CM4. The one that we're concerned with beneath the CM4 is called Cam Zero. That extra camera port will be used in the future when we add an additional camera. So I'll go ahead and just use my fingernails, pull on the black tab so that it comes out. If you're not lucky enough to have fingernails, you can use a small set of tweezers. And then with our Pi camera cable, there is a narrow end and a wide end. The narrow end will plug into the artboard. The wide end will plug into the Pi camera. The other thing that I would like to call out is you'll notice these gold plated pins. I'll go ahead and plug those down facing towards the artboard. We'll slide it in without using too much force. I'll push down on one tab on one side, then push down on the other. That should click nicely into place. And now our Pi camera cable is installed. We'll move forward with installing the heat sink over CM4. And in the near future, you'll have Linux, ROS2, drone blocks, and all sorts of capabilities that you can run on CM4. Hence the heat sink, just so that we can have heat dissipation and have our main Broadcom module that's on the CM4 run a little bit more efficiently. In your accessory bag, there is this thermal tape. There'll be a little bit of plastic on each side. We'll just go ahead and we'll place that over CM4's main module. And the next thing that we'll do is install the standoffs. There are four brass standoffs that come in the accessory bag. 
Those will screw into each corner to secure CM4 into place, as well as provide a mechanism to attach the heat sink. You should be able to screw each of these standoffs in by hand. If you run into any issues with screwing these in, you can always use a small pair of needle nose, tighten it, but don't overdo it, and just be careful as you turn your pliers not to accidentally displace anything on this board. With the standoffs in place, we will install the heat sink and pay attention to the antenna connector, which you can see right here. We want this cutout to be over the connector so we can expose that and later install our Wi-Fi antenna. That thermal tape will help hold the heat sink in position while we get our screws ready for mounting. Make sure to use the shorter screws, which will be provided in the bag of accessories. There's also a Phillips head that comes with that. I'll go ahead and secure each one of these corners down. As with all electronics in this build, hand tighten so that you feel that everything is secure, but do not overdo it. Our heat sink is in place. Our antenna connector is exposed. I'll go ahead and remove the antenna from the SMA connector. We'll go ahead and flip this over. There's a little pin on the middle of the connector you should feel it sit into place right over the middle and then you can use your thumb. And like that, it snaps into place. You'll notice that it can swivel. So a tip that I recommend that I definitely do with all my builds is put a little bit of hot glue. I've been known to be a bit liberal with my use of hot glue. I recommend you do as well, especially for this cable. You'll notice how I have it sitting at an angle here. When we mount our board, the antenna cable will head towards the rear of the frame, and that just makes it easier because there will be standoffs and other things to navigate around. We'll go ahead and move on to our installation. We have these 16 millimeter standoffs that we'll use to attach the art board to the top plate. But one thing I'd like to call out before we do is the battery straps. We always want to make sure to get those in. You can add them later if you forget, but it's just great to do it now. It really simplifies things. So knowing this will be the top, we will run, we'll run a strap through each of these slots. I'll do the same here with this other strap. These can always be adjusted later. You'll be able to slide them back and forth. Let's go ahead and move on to installing our artboard. We have these 16 millimeter standoffs and we're going to install one in each of these four holes. Always recommend just pay attention to orientation of the frame. Once again, this press nut should be facing up. So when we turn it over, we can mount the battery tray directly to it. This will be at the front of the frame where you see the D for Dexy. You'll quickly be able to tell the rear with the XT60 cutout, as well as the Wi-Fi antenna hole. You should be able to get these really secure with your hand. And then I recommend just a quick check, a little bit of torque on this with the one and a half millimeter hex head. Screw those in, get those nice and tight. Let me just show so it's clear. You'll notice in your kit, these are more thin and shorter than the standard frame standoffs, 16 millimeter, two and a half wide. So that should be a clear indicator that these are the ones we want to use for mounting the art board. So let's go ahead and move on to that step. We have our art board. You'll notice that we have our XT60 here in the rear. So I'm gonna turn this around we're just going to set this down right here on top of the standoffs and then use each of our four screws. We'll tighten those down as much as we possibly can. Then we'll use our one and a half millimeter hex driver, get that down nice and snug, not overly tight. We don't want to strip the head or 
even worse, potentially crack the artboard. Build is really starting to come together. The last step is you'll see this XT60 bulkhead, which will come to you pre-soldered. And I'll add that is a great thing, by the way. We'll notice the cutout here. We'll just flip that over, press that into place. I'll go ahead and screw these in by hand, follow up once again with the one and a half millimeter hex driver. It's a great addition to the Dexy five inch frame. It really allows easy plug and play access for the battery. We really put a lot of thought into this frame design as well as the electronics. There were several iterations of Dexy prior to bringing this to life. So I hope you guys are enjoying the build so far. I'll just add one last final tip. It might be useful to run this antenna cable beneath the standoff just so we're near the back of the frame. A lot of this is accessible with everything enclosed, but does prove to be challenging at times. Great job getting the artboard and additional components installed. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next build video.